Namaste viewers, welcome to Bend It Like LD and today's sequence is a special request by a very close and dear friend yoga for menopausal symptoms, yoga for perimenopausal symptoms and yoga for premenstrual PMS symptoms. So today's sequence is a restorative practice and it's a reminder for us to love our bodies the way it is and to pamper our bodies during those times of the month when our hormones play havoc with us and to enjoy the art uh, enjoy and um, learn the art of letting go and completely relax our bodies um, during those times of the month when we get our periods or when we experience these kind of symptoms so let us begin our practice by lying down on our back and we'll start with three-way breathing first to just allow our body breath and mind taking the right palm on your chest and the left palm on your belly button taking a deep inhalation through your belly expanding it out completely taking that air all the way to your chest opening up the shoulders nicely and as you exhale relaxing your shoulders followed by your chest and followed by your abdomen using three parts of your body your belly your ribcage and your shoulders distributing oxygen to all parts of the body Practicing about 5 or 6 rounds of sectional breathing, we also call this as yogic breathing. Deep inhalation and deep exhalation. With every exhale, slowly settle down your thoughts. Relax your body and mind completely. Gently release, slowly bring your knees to your chest, hug your knees to your chest and gently rock side to side and front and back about three or four times, nicely warming up the spine first, slowly come up and turn around. We'll begin with some cat and cow stretches in a seated position today. So sit in any comfortable posture, placing your palms on your knees. As you inhale, arch your lower back and gently lift the chest and shoulders. And as you exhale, rounding your spine and gaze at your belly. Practicing this for a couple of more rounds. Inhaling, arch your back, lift up nicely. Exhale, round your back. Inhale one more time, arch your back, look up, exhale, rounding your back, straighten your elbows, inhale, arch your back, look up, exhale, round your back. One last time, inhale, arch your back and maybe just hold it for about five breaths. And exhale, round your back, gaze at your belly, hold it for about five breaths. And slowly release. And coming on to your knees. Take your palms slightly to the front of the mat. Tuck your toes and come to Parvatasana. Mountain pose. Draw your head deep in between your arms. And gently walk your heels up and down on either side to slowly loosen up your leg muscles. You may wish to do a couple of Surya Namaskars. I haven't done this in the sequence. But it's always good to do about two or four sets to just warm up the body so that your body opens up a lot better. And hands to your hips and slowly come up. And we'll begin with some hip rotations. So taking your feet wider than your hips slightly, palms on your hips. We'll start with nice hip rotation. As you inhale, push your hip forward. And as you exhale, push your hip back, making nice wide circles with your hips. To loosen up your hips a little. Nice hip rotations. Five times on each side. Once you're done with five rounds, you change direction and try on the other side. Inhaling, push your hip forward, and as you exhale, push your hip back and stretch back nicely. Slowly release and bring your feet slightly together, keeping your feet about hip distance apart. Just drop your palms down. You can even take your feet wider than your hips. You can hold opposite elbows and just gently swing from side to side, just allowing the spine to just warm up and relax completely. 
you can also drop your palms down and go up and down take it to the right foot and then take it to the left foot you can do this for however long you wish this is just to loosen up the spine and feel good on your back and come up vertebrae by vertebrae gently come up exhale release that feels really good on the spine and moving on to a slightly deeper forward bend so take your feet slightly wider uh, maybe about three and a half to four feet apart and in this practice you should have bolsters with you so probably grab bolsters if you don't have bolsters maybe grab a couple of pillows so bring your hands to your hips and draw your hip forward bring your elbows close to each other take a deep inhalation arch your lower back and stretch up and as you exhale lead with your chest forward and gently drop down as much as you can now use the bolster in any which way that works for you so I'm showing you a couple of options here so you can drop your head on the bolster you can use two bolsters if you're not able to reach down you can place your palms on either side of your head or you can place your palms down or you can stretch your arms on the floor in front of you so take any option that works for you the idea is to feel good so don't strain yourself if you don't have bolsters, take two or three pillows. You can also hold your ankles on either side to give a little more deeper stretch. This is such a delicious stretch. You should surely feel very, very nice after this. Using blocks are always wonderful to allow your body to open up gently. Deep exhalation here. And slowly keep your knees soft and gently come up, hands to your hips, inhale, slowly come up. And slowly heel toe your feet in, heel in, toe in and slowly bring your feet together. Keep your bolster by the side and sit on the mat first, stretch your legs out in front of you. We'll start with the caterpillar pose. So bring the bolster in between your feet first and slowly try to get the soles of your feet together. Lifting your arms all the way up, take a deep inhalation, lengthen up your spine, lead with your chest, drop your chest on your bolster. You can place your palms under your toes and just drop your head on the bolster and let go completely. So use the bolster in a way that works for you. So some people like to keep the bolster in between, you can take the bolster under your knees. So understand the tight spots in your body and accordingly use them. Try to stay here for about a minute or so, exhaling deeply and try not to really work too much in any of the asanas because the idea in this sequence is to allow your body to open up gently without too much of an effort. This is not a rigorous practice so one must remember that. Lift up nicely and exhale, release and slowly keep your bolster by the side. Now bend your knees and walk your feet to the outer edges of the mat and take your palms slightly behind your hips and drop both your knees to the right side. Drop it completely down as much as you can. Now bring your left palm, turn towards the right and see if you can draw your chest down towards the mat. You can bend the elbows and drop the head like the way I've shown you here. I'll show you with a bolster on the other side in case you feel you are not able to drop your head all the way down. Inhaling and exhaling deeply here. Again the idea is to just gently stretch your body. Not stressing it or not opening it up, you know, working too hard on the postures. Now use a bolster on the other side. So for the other side drop the knees to the left side, take a deep exhalation. Place your elbows on the bolster and drop your head on the bolster. This is probably a much easier way for some of you maybe. And relax completely. Feel that sense of peace, calmness and well-being slowly pervading your body with every asana. And slowly release. And we'll do a nice forward fold Paschimottanasana with a bolster. So I'm showing you some options here. So place the bolster on your thighs, lifting your arms all the way up. Inhale, lengthen up your spine. Take a deep exhalation, drop your chest and head on the bolster. You can even hug your bolster. 
If you feel you are able to reach forward, you can stretch your arms out and hold your toes or your ankles. So whatever works for you. So you can either hold your ankle or hold the toes and just relax completely with minimal effort, gently opening up and stretching the body. Deep exhalation. This is a beautiful posture to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, kicking all the feel-good hormones in your body. And slowly release. Now stretch your legs out in front of you. We're just going to do a little bit of a cradle pose. To, it's called the rock the cradle pose. So bend your right knee and place the right foot in the crook of your left elbow. Wrap your right arm around your right knee, interlock your fingers if you can and just gently rock to side, rock side to side just like you would rock a baby. This is just to open up the hip flexors and moving to the other side, encircle your arms around your left knee and gently rock side to side keeping your spine straight, shoulders relaxed, taking the knee all the way to the left and to the front. Opening up your groin and your hip flexors and slowly release. Relax for a couple of breaths. And from there slowly lie down on your back. We'll do Bhujangasana with an easy version to relax your lower back and upper back. And slowly keep the bolster under your chest. Placing your elbows on the mat, feet slightly apart. Keep your shoulders away from your ears and gently close your eyes and just let go completely. Stay there for about 30 seconds to a minute, as long as you can, as long as you wish. Inhaling and exhaling. Strengthening your lower back, middle back and upper back gently. you're done slowly come up and just keep the bolster to the left side oh this is a fantastic pose to just bend your left knee you can just wrap your arm around the bolster and just lie down into a modified version of balasana and you can also place your chest on the bolster take the bolster under your chest and just wrap your bolster like a Use it like a pillow and just let go completely. I think I'm already feeling a little sleepy here. This is beautiful. You just, just start feeling so good. I don't feel like coming up, I think. <laughs> Relax. Yeah, I can see all that calmness. That smile. Those feel good hormones. And we'll start with a little bit of Virasana posture. So I want you to bend your knees here. Now important here is to lift up and roll the calf muscles out and sit. Now some of you may be able to do this. So a couple of options for you is to keep the bolster under your back and just lie down on the bolster and stretch your arms to the side. If this is too painful on your knees, please come out of the posture immediately. Do not strain your knees. You can also stay on your elbows like this if that works for you. And if your knees are still hurting, then I think this posture can be avoided. Any pain in the knee is not to be ignored. So come out of the posture, listen to your body always. Gently let go completely. This is also amazing for the back. It opens up the front of your thighs. Gentle breathing in and breathing out. Try to stay in all these poses for about maybe two or three minutes if you can or if you have the luxury of time. 
It's good to start practicing these sequences about 7 to 10 days before the onset of your periods or by the time you start feeling those irritable symptoms, the fatigue. Then moving to Anahata Asana, make sure come onto your knees, make sure your hips stay above the knees and gently take your palms to the front and draw your chest towards the bolster. Now adjust the position of the bolster depending on how much deeper you want to go into the stretch. This is a great stretch for your back and for your shoulders. And stay there for however long you can. Make sure the hip stays above the knee so that you can extend the spine. Once you come to a comfortable edge in any asana, especially in restorative sequences, try not to fiddle around too much or move too much and try to stay in that pose for about a minute or two minutes or even 30 seconds, how much ever you can. And slowly release and come up. And gently lie down on your back. This is again one of my favorite asana, Supta Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together. Now do not walk your soles all the way close to your pelvis. Keep it a little away from the pelvis so that you open up the hips gently. You feel that gentle stretch on the inner inner thighs from the all the way from the hips all the way to the knees on the inner thighs. And just stay there for however long you can. I'm showing you a couple of options for your arms, position of your arms here. This is again great for women, especially during menopause, PMS symptoms, cramps during periods. Helps to unwind. Good for falling off asleep. Once you wish to come, take your palms under your knees and slowly bring your knees together and hug your knees to your chest and gently rock side to side. And bring your knees all the way to your chest, take your arms to the side and drop both your knees to the right side. Try to bring your knees as close to your el right elbow as possible. Gently twist and look towards your left fingertips. Feel that gentle twist in the body. And on the other side, bring the knees to your chest first and drop your knees to the other side. Supporting your knees with your left palm, stretch your right arm to the side. Slowly come up. Now slowly hug your knees to your chest. Gently rock side to side again. Now tuck your toes towards you. Place your palms under your toes and give a gentle push to your toes so that your thighs are pressing against your chest. This is again very good. You'll feel really good doing this. So press the toes firmly so that the thighs press against the chest. And do that a couple of more times. And slowly come up. Turn over to your right side and slowly come up. And we'll finish our practice with a beautiful asana called Viparita Karani. It's got a host of benefits. So you take your mat against the edge of the wall, scoot your hips to the wall and gently slide your legs up. I'll show you both options with, without the bolster, with the bolster. This is again one of my favorite asanas and this is great for so many things. It's great for insomniacs, it's great for um, those suffering from migraine. So just staying here before bedtime will give you good sleep. You can also separate your feet. You can also bend your knees and bring the soles of your feet together. I love doing that as well. And you can just finish your sequence like this, staying here for some time and just 
letting go completely this is also a lovely pose for runners for people who do a lot of cardio who are athletes to help the lactic acid pooling at the ankles to come down and to bring the circulation of blood back to the body back to the body so this is the final asana for this sequence so you can just stay here for however long you wish i like to usually stay here for about 3 to 5 minutes and you you can also use a bolster so bring the bolster under your hips adjust your hips so that you feel comfortable so that your shoulders and your neck are not straining so this is for those who feel you cannot take your hips all the way to the wall you can always use a bolster under your hips or a pillow or a blanket and just let go completely subscribe to my youtube channel and instagram on the same name um, so stay fit stay healthy stay happy practice yoga and do post your comments feedback and suggestions if you like this video i'd love to hear from you so till the next video